Uh, this is an Alpha Spider. <laughs> Um, there is, however, one car from the mid-60s which has quite literally stood up to the test of time. That. It's a Mercedes SL, and it causes me serious problems every time I drive through south-west London. Let me show you what I mean. This is the Wandsworth one-way system. You may have heard about it on the traffic reports. They talk about it most nights. But it's not the jams that keep me away. It's that place. I always find myself sitting in my Euro box looking at all those classics and thinking, oh, I could have one of those. And then I'd be interesting and people would like me. Oh, look at this. Look. Oh. Of course, I'm not daft. I know it would be stupid and ruinously expensive to buy most of the stuff in here. But they always have a couple of old SLs in the window and the force is strong with that one. That's why I'm taking this 280 for a test drive. I hope I hate it. I hope it overheats. I hope it melts. I hope we really don't get on and it gives me an ear infection. And then I can get rid of this silly, stupid pipe dream about buying one. To find out what it's like, I headed to the most prosperous part of Britain, the little riverside towns that nestle in the foothills of the Chilterns. This would have been the natural habitat for the old SL, so let's see if it can still cut it. You can buy a good one today for 25 to 30,000 pounds, and a bad one for 10,000 or so. If you do end up with a bad one, it's not the end of the world, because Mercedes, amazingly, still keep all the spare parts for these old SLs. You could actually rebuild the whole engine for £4,000. And remember, this is from a time when Mercedes was still building its cars properly. The paint alone on this weighs 20 kilograms. And actually, there isn't that much to go wrong. I've got, um... Um... I've got a heater. And, um... A cigarette lighter, and um, and that's about it. So, annoyingly, it doesn't cost much more to buy than a Ford Mondeo, and it shouldn't be any harder to run than a vacuum cleaner. Damn! There's more bad news as well, I'm afraid, because it's not completely horrible to drive. It doesn't shake your spleen off its mountings every time you go over a bump. It's got power steering, it's got an automatic gearbox, and on the motorway coming down here, I hit 65. How about that? 65. The 2.8-litre engine develops 170 brake horsepower, but most of that is used to cart the paint around. There's none left over for the car. And things really aren't helped by the kickdown, which is a switch. And I do mean a switch that simply turns the noise up. Ready? More noise. No real change in the speed, though. Nothing. Still doing 41. 41. 41, 42! Even in the 60s, this wasn't a sports car, and it certainly isn't now. But that doesn't stop me wanting one. Look at the people who drive old SLs today. Kate Moss, Martin McCutcheon, Colin Powell, Michael Winner, the Dimbleby brothers. They're not bothered about power or burning rubber. They just want something reliable, something charismatic, something a little bit elegant. And I absolutely understand that. Not even a lack of speed has put me off this thing. I'm forever judging a car on how it goes, how it handles, how it rides, but that's not the point with this. The point is how it makes you feel. 
I thought it'd be too dainty for me. I thought I'd look like a bear in a pushchair, but I like it. And I look at everybody else going around in their air-conditioned Euro boxes, and I just feel better off. We've come a very long way in the last 35 years. I mean, the modern Mercedes SL has air-conditioned seats and radar-guided cruise control and a top speed of a couple of hundred miles an hour. All the stuff you really need. But in terms of style, which you can enjoy every time you pop down to the shops for a pint of milk, I think we're going backwards. You like old cars, don't you? I do. So you must have a nightmare going around that one-way system. Ah, except I don't go that way, you see. I take a big 50-mile detour right around London just but in case. But what if you're in a cab? Yeah. In what? Well, I have to concentrate very hard on the advert on the back of the driver's seat or something. If yeah. I look out of the window and there's a Rolls-Royce, I've had it. Yeah, you'd Stop. be in there, poof. Yes, exactly. Bought, ruined. See, I actually thought that if I went for a test drive in one of these, it would, like, cure me. I thought it would be sort of horrid to drive, but it isn't. I think you could drive one of these every day, no People problem. People do. I know. They do. It is basically a very, very cool car. 